Okay, everyone, um, welcome back from your holiday vacation. Hope you uh, didn't get blasted with the snow like we did here on the East Coast, or at least you survived your trip home. Uh, time for a tutorial. It's been a while, but uh, I'm going to start putting out a few new ones. I wanted to show you some of the hidden, really cool tools in Blender 2.5. Uh, I'm just going to go over a few of them here because there's quite a few of them. First thing to be aware of is if you go into the file menu and go to user preferences, uh, there's a panel here that says add ons. Okay, so the, a lot of these tools are not enabled by default. So you have to go in here. I have all selected. You could select just certain tools if you wish. Um, I just go in here and just add any of the ones that you think are cool. And as you can see, I, there's a few of them that I haven't actually added yet. But uh, there's things like the landscape, bolt factory, extras, gears, gemstones, solids, towards import light wave objects, chain, cloud generator. There's a ton of them. And then after you've added these by check marking them, just save. Save as default. Okay, now those things will be added uh, to your Blender interface. So now, uh, when we hit uh, Shift A to bring up our add menu, you'll see all our standard primitives. And then also you'll see these ones here that look like a little plug, and these are the ones that, of course, are our are, are new plugins, basically. So let's just go over a few of the uh, neat, cool ones here. So here's the landscape tool, okay? And uh, basically you'll have all the options for the landscape tool over here in your tools menu. If you don't see this tools bar over here on the side, hit the T key. And if you don't see this options, uh, this, uh, options menu, hit the N key, okay? T, N. All right, so with the options uh, set up here, uh, we can just go ahead and start messing with things on this mesh. And basically, it's just a matter of um, just modifying these until you find something that uh, that works for you. So you can just you can get really kind of hypnotic with the different uh, different aspects of this. Just going through here and finding uh, the type of uh, plane that you, you know, or type of landscape that you want to create and check the sea level. Uh, I mean, you can really just kind of kind of go crazy with this. And as you can see, it's just extremely easy to add. And it's just, as you can see here in the uh, outliner view, it's just a standard uh, mesh. So if you uh, click on that, you can go ahead and edit it with uh, all your standard editing tools. All right, if I enable, for example, my um, proportional editing, oops. And I can start. Uh, okay, I can start moving these points around here. All right, and I can just start moving things around and edit the uh, landscape even further. All right, so that's the landscape tool. Uh, next one I'm going to show you is the cloud gener generator. I think this cloud generator is pretty cool. You can see it right here on the tools menu. So this one actually works with your standard uh, object tools. Shift A and create a mesh. For example, I'm going to create a UV sphere. All right. And then under here, under my tools panel, I'm going to go ahead and generate cloud. All right. Now it will generate a cloud for you. And um, you can see here under, you get this new object called cloud bounds. And if you open it up in the outliner, you'll see a whole bunch of stuff. There's points, there's a mesh, there's objects in here. And it actually, creates, um, so what it does is it takes whatever mesh you have and it creates a, a, a cloud object out of that and it creates all the different um, materials. There's the cloud material, it creates that for you. So um, basically it, it turns it into a volumetric cloud. Then when you render this, uh, it will go ahead and render out what looks like an actual cloud and it's volumetric, you can fly right through it with your camera. It takes a long time to render, so I'm not going to uh, render that now because uh, that might actually crash my system while I'm doing screen recording. Uh, the next one I want to show you that's neat is the uh, chain. So you go here to chain. All right. And you get just two chain links. And um, unfortunately, there's this thing's not documented very well. But if you go in here, and uh, I think this is the curve here. So if I, yes, there, here we go. There's this curve actually controls this this chain object. All right, so if you um, edit the curve by selecting it and then hitting tab, then you can go ahead and right click on one of the uh, uh, vertices of this curve, and then just start extruding the curve out with the E key. Hit E, and as you can see, it neatly 
starts creating a chain that actually follows this curve everywhere you go. Now you can see here there's a couple of joints. I don't know if you can see this right here. That one right there, that link is a bit deformed. So just be aware that it's not entirely foolproof yet. You know, you have to find a, you know, there may be some curvatures of, of your uh, link of your uh, curve here, which will produce a chain that has links that are a bit kind of uh, misshapen. But basically, uh, that's all there is to it. And then, of course, since this curve is like anything else in Blender, you could apply, like, for example, soft bodies to it, so, uh, dynamic effects to it, and then your chain would react to gravity and whatnot. So easy to set up, um, easy to get into. If you wish, you can go into the chain here, and you can find all the different components. You can see here it's just a torus object. And so if we were to go in here and start modifying these things here, you can see that every part of the chain is modified as well. So now I've got an entirely different chain just by uh, just by editing that one little object. And also there's the modifier under here, the, the array modifier, for example. You can find it here. There we go. So you can mess with all the different modifiers that uh, make up that chain so you can have even more control over uh, the chain, all right? Uh, let's see, let's look at a couple other ones. These, these are pretty easy to get into. There's the chain, there's gears. So basically, here's, here's a gear, and then you in, on your, in your tools panel, you can just go ahead and change the number of teeth that that gear has, the radius, the base, all that kind of stuff, all right? So easy, easy to, super easy to create different things. Um, that's the gear tool. Uh, let's go into the gemstone and create a diamond. Again, uh, on the tools panel, you have all the options for uh, manipulating the various aspects of your diamond. Let's go back under gemstones and just do a gem. So now this is more of a faceted type of gem. And as you can see here, you also, well, once you've moved it around, you pretty much lose those original tools those editing tools that came with it. So I would go ahead and add that gem again. All right, so I would go ahead and, and just make sure that you've got it the way you want to before you start manipulating it, all right? So again, you can just, you can just get into all the different uh, aspects that make up this gem and make a completely new gem out of that, all right? Uh, Bolt does a similar thing. So as you can see here, you have a, a, a bolt that would go into a machine, and you can take, you can choose the different types of bolts. So, you, just based on whatever uh, presets that they have here, and then of course you can modify that even more. Shank length. All right. Uh, pretty pretty self-explanatory here how the how the bolt works. Just go ahead and just manipulate until you've got the type of bolt that you want, and you know. You can model this by yourself, but you know who who wants to do that if it's just something you know a bolt that you want. Um, the rest of these, you know, there's star just creates a star. Um, you can add extra points to it. So again, a lot of these self-explanatory. Just you know, um, just go through there, uh, just play with them till you find the uh, you know things that you want. Pipe joints. If you want to add uh, different pipes, oh, add pipe joints. There's a Y joint. So again, these are utilities. They're not meant to supplant your modeling tools. They're meant to augment your modeling tools. But I uh, just thought I'd let you know that they're in there because they're not kind of well documented. And so hopefully that will uh, help you out in the future.